Ashley Martinson was born in March 1998 to a pretty rough household. Her dad was reportedly super abusive and ended up abandoning her and her mom when she was just six years old. But Ashley's mom, Jennifer, moved from one abusive man to another. Because after her divorce, she got into a relationship with an alcoholic scumbag named Jerry, who was also very violent. At the time, Jerry, Jennifer, and Ashley all lived in a trailer near a sewage plant. This is already off to a pretty rough start. Between the ages of 7 and 10, Ashley was sexually assaulted by Jerry. He also beat Jennifer in front of Ashley. The cops were basically on speed dial for this family. But anytime they'd arrest Jerry, Jennifer would just go bail him out. Finally, one of Ashley and Jennifer's family friends stepped in and was able to get Jerry in prison for a longer period. But social services never came, and Ashley was never put in therapy. This led her to experience depression, anxiety, and PTSD. She also started cutting herself and attempted to end her life when she was a bit older. Okay, that's a lot going on for Ashley. And now she's not even getting the proper treatment for her trauma? That could definitely lead a person to do something extreme. Shortly after Jerry was out of the picture, Jennifer found herself with another violent man. It was a guy named Thomas, who had quite the criminal history. His previous convictions included kidnapping, assault, domestic abuse, and a handful of other charges. What a gem! And I wonder if Jennifer knew all of this going into it. Like, maybe this girl should start running background checks on her boyfriends or something? Jennifer and Thomas first met through an online dating service and were talking long distance. In 2011, Jennifer and Ashley moved from Kansas to North Dakota to live with Thomas and his two daughters. Shortly after that, the couple had a kid together. Thomas was so awful to the whole family, like super, super toxic. He mentally and physically tormented Ashley and Jennifer and wouldn't even let them talk to their family or have friends over. This guy has got to go. He sounds like nothing but trouble. And who is he to tell them that they can't talk to their own family? That's a bit controlling if you ask me. Well, and every other human with a level head on their shoulders. Okay, so in the middle of all of this, Ashley was sent to live with her biological dad. He ended up assaulting her multiple times and the police were sent after him. Ashley was then sent back to live with her mom and stepdad. Apparently, her mom didn't want to take her back, but her stepdad did. Yeesh. This is already a whirlwind of a story and we haven't even gotten to the slayings yet. So Ashley came back to live with Jennifer, Thomas, and her three little sisters. Shortly after that, the whole family moved to Rhinelander, Wisconsin. This was when Ashley was 16. There, the abuse got worse, and all of the kids were under super strict rules. They had to wake up early to do chores before school, ride together on the bus, and couldn't even have any friends over. Ashley was allowed to have one social visit outside of the house a week. She also had to give all of the money she earned at work to Thomas. Okay, this is getting out of hand. Like, I can't tell if Thomas was desperate for money or if he was just being an a-hole. Well, Jennifer let it all happen, and she even joined in on the violence. And as if things aren't already terrible, wait until you hear this. Since Thomas was a convicted felon, he wasn't allowed to have firearms. He forced Jennifer to buy some for him that he would keep all over the house, including on counters and tables. And the craziest part is, they were all fully loaded and ready to fire at any point. Yo, what? There are kids that live at that house. I can't imagine being in Ashley's shoes. It sucks because she's a teenager, so it's not like she can get out of this situation unless her mom leaves Thomas. And how crazy is it that they just have pistols lying around the kitchen counter? Let me just grab a banana on my way to school and, oh, this is a firearm. As a teenager, Ashley started to go through a dark emo phase. She was wearing a lot of heavy black eyeliner and dark clothing, got really into drawing gory sketches, and wrote dark, sinister poems that she later turned into a blog called The Nightmare by Vamp Chick. A lot of the stories she wrote about involved vampires, mass executioners, and other morbid characters. Okay, so this is a bit dark, 
but it also just seems like she might be going through a phase at this point. I feel like every teenager goes through weird stages where they're just trying to find their place in life. Like when I was in high school, I was super into Korean soap operas and I really wanted to be Korean. So bad. Here's where things start to get wild, as if they weren't already. One day, Ashley took to Facebook to rant about her stepdad, Thomas. She said he attacked her mom again, and she was fed up to the point of running away. Ashley had apparently been planning to get out of her toxic household and move in with a friend. Around the same time, she started seeing a 22-year-old guy named Ryan. One day after her 17th birthday, Ashley finally told her mom and stepdad about her older boyfriend, which led to a huge fight because her parents were not happy about her new boo. They took away her cell phone and keys and told her she wasn't allowed to see Ryan ever again. Jennifer told Ashley to leave the house, but Thomas said they should keep her there and homeschool her so they could watch her at all times. Okay, Thomas is on a new level. I get maybe grounding Ashley or something, but to rip her out of school, which is probably her only escape from her family, is way too far. And something tells me he wouldn't be one of those nurturing homeschool teachers. The worst punishment I ever got was not getting dessert for a month. After their big blowout fight, Ashley ended up packing her things and leaving the house for good. But she didn't get too far because Thomas followed her and made her come back home. Once Ashley got back, she stormed upstairs to her room. But along the way, she grabbed a few of the firearms lying around the house. Which later, she claims the weapons were originally going to be used to take her own life. Shortly after Ashley ran upstairs to her room, Thomas came up and started banging on her door. And it was sometime around then when Ashley made the decision to take out her stepfather instead of herself. She grabbed a pistol and fired two bullets. So obviously everyone in the house heard the bullets ring out. Jennifer runs upstairs to see what's going on. She sees her husband lying limp on the floor and immediately tries to help him, but it's too late. At this point, Jennifer is fuming. She is yelling at Ashley and gets so mad, she grabs a nearby blade and starts fighting her. Mind you, this is her own daughter she's fighting. Ashley somehow gets the blade in her hand and goes to town on her mom. And this is probably the oh shit moment when Ashley realized what she had done. Her mom and stepdad are on the floor and she's the reason why. I wonder what was going on through her head. My this is sheer panic, but maybe there was some relief too. I mean, her parents had put her through a shit ton of torment and now it's over. But I'm not really sure if that's the way she should have escaped them. Well, what's done is done. And Ashley now has to figure out what to do next. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned this, but at the time, all three of Ashley's sisters were at the house. After the big event, Ashley went downstairs and told her sisters that they were going to play a game. She put them all into one room, gave them some juice and snacks, and tied the door shut. What kind of twisted game is that? I've never heard of it before. After locking up her sisters, Ashley fled the scene. And this part doesn't make sense to me. Like, what does she think is gonna happen next? Obviously, her sisters can't stay in that room forever, so honestly, it just looks even worse for Ashley. She's already snuffed her parents, and now she's locking her sisters up? Well, they were eventually discovered because one day later, 911 dispatchers received a phone call from one of Ashley's little sisters. But she apparently didn't make the call until one full day later. Officials theorized this was because the girls were scared their older sister might still be in the house. When officers arrived at the scene, they declared Jennifer and Thomas deceased. After checking things out, they immediately pinned Ashley as the main suspect. Meanwhile, Ashley was with her boyfriend, Ryan. They first went to stay at Ashley's friend's place down the street, but they later took off in Ryan's truck to head to his hometown in Tennessee. But before they could get there, an Indiana police officer stopped the truck and arrested them. When Ashley was put in the cop car, an officer asked if she knew what they were getting pulled over for. She told them she assumed it was for slaying her parents and that she didn't mean to do it. Okay, so at least Ashley isn't playing games with them and acting like she didn't do it. I can't stand when people who are obviously the perp act like they know nothing and then get caught later. Did you forget the fact that there's evidence all over? 
So Ashley and Ryan are in custody and investigators begin interviewing them. Apparently, Ryan didn't even know anything about the executions. Wait, how was he in a truck with this girl for hours without knowing she just knocked out both of her parents? Looks like their relationship is lacking in the communication department. And I wonder how Ryan felt once he found out. He was probably so shocked, but also relieved that she didn't do any of that to him. Ryan was never considered a suspect in the case and was eventually cleared. But for Ashley, that's a different story. Investigators already knew that Ashley was guilty for snuffing her mom, but in her first interview, she claimed that she didn't have anything to do with her stepdad's execution. She said her mom was the one who knocked Thomas out with bullets. After that, Ashley allegedly ran upstairs and found her mom standing over her deceased stepdad with the firearm. Then her mom started yelling at her and all hell broke loose. Ashley claimed the only reason she slashed her mom was out of self-defense. This doesn't make sense to me all the way, because if her mom had a firearm in her hand, how did the blade magically get into the mix? And I'm not sure about this whole self-defense thing, because she jabbed her mom over 30 times. Well, clearly Ashley didn't think her story all the way through, because investigators also interviewed her little sisters who were in the house when everything went down. They told officials that Ashley fired the bullets at Thomas before locking them in a room downstairs. Gotta leave it to the little siblings to snitch. But honestly, I'm glad they did because this is a pretty serious situation. Ashley continued to deny her sister's claims until days later when she came around and admitted to both executions. During their interviews with Ashley's little sisters, investigators started to learn more about the violence that went on at the house. The three girls told officials that Thomas beat all of them and tried to choke them on multiple occasions. They also talked about his strict rules and even said he's executed several of their animals in fits of rage. Officials also noted the amount of firearms that were in the house when Thomas wasn't supposed to have any at all. So clearly, Ashley wasn't living in a household with loving and caring parents. And this is where things are starting to get a bit blurry for the investigators. I mean, how do you go about prosecuting a girl who committed a crime against her abusive criminal parents? I don't know, but I'm glad I'm not in their shoes. Ashley eventually went to court, and since she had just turned 17, she was tried as an adult, which is wild, because all of this happened one day after her 17th birthday. So if she had done it just two days earlier, she would have been tried as a juvenile. Ashley was originally charged with two counts of first degree homicide and three counts of false imprisonment for trying to lock up her sisters. She pleaded not guilty by reason of mental disease. Her attorneys argued that she had been physically, mentally, and emotionally abused by the adult in her life since she was born. Later, Ashley's attorneys made a deal and the charges were brought down to second degree in exchange for Ashley's guilty plea. Ashley was sentenced to 23 three years in prison and 17 years of supervision. Since her imprisonment, Ashley has received her high school diploma. She also told one journalist in an interview that she finally feels safe and happy. She said, it doesn't make it right what happened, but I was just a girl, an abused girl, who was forced to make a really bad decision. I'm not the monster that they portrayed me to be. Wow. Talk about a moral dilemma. Stories like this make me glad I'm not a judge or an investigator or anything, because I would have no idea what to do with this case. And I think it's crazy that none of this would have ever happened if Thomas didn't chase Ashley when she packed up and ran away. Or if Jennifer hadn't met the creep on a dating site, which makes me even more scared to use those. All right, well, that's all for now. Stay safe out there. And maybe don't go posting your criminal intentions to Facebook. Post about cookie sandwiches. Just a tip.